Good evening, everybody. It's that time. Bless you. This is the cathedral. We're so glad to have you on. It is becoming the word. Let's give everybody a few minutes to get on to find us. Bless the Lord. Yes. All is well. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Go ahead and invite do what we do, do the work of an evangelist, and go ahead and invite. Hi, Denise. Good evening. It's your favor. It's your that's going to be on the, on the new worship CD. Yeah. Yeah. Favor's going to be on the new worship CD. Pastor's working on it. I'm trying to get him to have it done by August. Let's cross our fingers that that CD will be released by August. Yes, we also is. have a new book coming out. Uh, a revision of the old book is coming out. We've got lots of stuff getting ready to happen. You are a part of it. We love you. We praise God for you. We're going to have an amazing time this evening. Those of you that are fasting, hold on to your fast. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Amen. Come on, let's do the work of an evangelist. And let's invite, invite, invite. Yes. It's your faith. Happy Wednesday to you. Hi, Donna. How are you? It's your favor. Okay, go ahead and invite. We'll be outside all day. Hear me, hear me, hear me. All right, where we at? Folks are coming on. All right, let's give it a few more minutes. Let's invite everybody, invite about 20 people, and then we are we are going we are we're gonna get started. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Can everybody hear us? All right, fantastic. Hi, Felicia. Hi, how are you? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to have an amazing Bible study. Go ahead and find your sisters and brothers. I'm looking for everybody. Pam, yes. I'm looking for Ayan. I'm looking for Courtney. I'm looking for about 100 more, y'all. Come on. Let's, let's rock. <laughs> All this time we thought y'all could hear this. <laughs> It, it did not click until last week that what we were playing through the system couldn't really be heard. So you should be able to hear It's Your Favor. You should be able to hear that song. That's the song that the Lord gave me while we was in, in church. Often God will drop a song in our spirit and the Lord dropped that in there. And I'm telling you, we, we rock with that all night in service. We had an amazing time. That's one of the ones that's going to be on uh, the worship experience. Uh, and uh, we are excited about that. I'm not happy with the numbers. Let's invite a few more people. Let's go to Messenger. Let's go to text. And let's get the rest of our sisters yes. and brothers on. And let's get started. Thank you. Thank you. Folks have already been giving their offering, their seed, and their tithes. I love you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your obedience. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let's go and let's invite about 20 more people, each and every single one of us. Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. A few more people, let's invite a few more people. 
Cheryl, let's invite a few more people and let them on. Some people are at work. We do understand. I see Ayana is on. Hi, Ayana. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm excited about what God is doing in you, for you, with you, and through you. Yes, I am. I'm excited. I see the Williams family is on. Hallelujah. Emma Marie, thank you for coming on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his name. About 10 more people. Can we do about 10 more people? That's it. Let's do 10 more people. Hallelujah. Believe me, they do come on. If they don't come on now, they come on later. We go back and we look and we uh, we notice that uh, between 100 and 150 additional people come on after the service. So keep doing the work of the evangelists. Keep inviting. You don't drop that link. That's what we say. Drop that link. That's it. Woo. Drop that link. Get ready for your favor. <laughs> Get ready for, for the unknown to happen for you. Get ready for it. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Drop that link. Drop that link. Pastor's going to open us up in prayer. The numbers are growing slowly. And I know it's the weekday. People just getting in. People eating dinner, trying to get settled with their kids. So we're going to give you a few more minutes. But Pastor's going to go ahead and open us up in prayer. And um, we're going to get started. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May you have your way, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father God, for us gathering here this evening, our Heavenly Father, in an expectation, Father God, for our spiritual meal, my Heavenly Father, this evening. May we, my Heavenly Father, relax ourselves, take a deep breath. And just relax our minds, our spirit, our soul. We thank you, Father God, at such a time mm -hmm. as this. We're able just to sit here and be on this call, my Heavenly Father, and sit with you. and Sit with you. Understand, Father God, who we are, whose we are, what we need to do to just understand who you are, my Heavenly Father, in your word. Our Heavenly Father, in your knowledge and wisdom, may we be, be, be able to apply it to our lives, my Heavenly Father, and do what's necessary, my Heavenly Father. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for the bishop's teaching tonight. We thank you, Father God, for your mercy, your grace, and your space to get it right. We love you, and we thank you for being who we are. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to do uh, uh, the commercial for the revival. Pastor's going to bring that commercial up. And then um, thank all of you who tuned in last night to uh, Roku Box Fire TV, Apple TV. Uh, the the on-demand is on now. We thought it was on yesterday, but it was it didn't come on until now. That the series has to play, and then it's on. Mm -hmm. So you can go to Roku Box to Preach the Word Network, mm -hmm. and you can put in Bishop Stanfield uh, and Ministries, and it will come up. Or you can go to Apple TV or uh, Fire TV. Even one of those would get you on. Uh, these are messages mm -hmm. that you have not seen on Facebook. And I tell you, you will be blessed. Last night was enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we thank God uh, for the feedback. If you want to send in a, um, a comment to Priest Road Network or Ruku Box, you can do that. You can send in a comment and tell them how uh, much you enjoy the message, how much you enjoyed the broadcast. Pastor did an excellent job, excellent, excellent, excellent job in um, producing that. And we thank God for Pastor Tim and his testimony TV ministry. Uh, and uh, I be first. <laughs> she be first. Uh, and uh, we thank God oh, for yeah. that. Mm -hmm. We bless the Lord. Uh, pray for the expansion of the television ministry. Pray for that 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 ministry will expand and that um, uh, uh, we will do all that God has called us to do. I'm particularly excited about the uh, Crusades, the 
sign wonders and miracle crusades and everywhere we go in the world it will be airing it on uh testimony tv by way of preach the word network mm -hmm. word the word network mm -hmm. or any other network we can but mm -hmm. it will come through um our ministry mm -hmm. called uh testimony tv mm -hmm. so we thank god for that so pray for the crusades uh, pray for me. You say, Bishop, how can I pray with you? How would it pray for the crusades, pray for the um, the uh, favor for the um, uh, television ministry. And then, of course, the development center. Now, this is this is what 2022 is looking like, uh, that we will have an, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, an executive team that will help us with the television ministry, uh, the development center. Each person will play a different part. Uh, and then, of course, um, the crusade signs and wonders. And so that's what we are believing God for. That's what we have been praying for for the last five to six years. And we see the manifestation of it. And we're so excited. Despise not small beginnings. Small beginning. And so we want to thank God for that. That's why we've been fasting or 40 days, 50 days, 10 days, whatever. That's why we've been fasting. Some kind come only by what? Fasting and praying. I see our brother from Kuwait yes. is on. God bless you. God Amen. bless you. The ministry there. Uh, mm -hmm. They are faithful, avid listeners mm -hmm. uh, to the Bishop Stanford ministry. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We're going to link up and have them on one day and just see what's going on in Kuwait by mm -hmm. the way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe that the gospel is being preached everywhere. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan, mm -hmm. Palestine, Kuwait. It's being mm -hmm. preached everywhere. Hallelujah. Big cities, little, small, <laughs> suburban areas. Back in the bomb form for countries. Hallelujah. I believe the word of God is everywhere. For the Bible says that the word would have to be preached every single place before the coming of our Lord could come. Pastor's going to bring us our commercial. We're going to have an amazing time tonight. We're going to move quickly uh, so that we can release you and you can get some good rest and um, get ready to get blessed. Invite. <laughs> Let's get those numbers up. Invite, Amen. Invite. Invite. Yes. Hallelujah. Right, everybody. That's uh, that's uh, I believe that's uh, there's been so many countries. <laughs> I can't remember what country it is, but uh, that's what's going to air on next Tuesday. We were in um, Uganda, uh, Uganda, Uganda on uh, last Tuesday, uh -huh. and then Kenya, and, then and uh, this uh, this is that Tuesday, the uh, Liberia is the twenty second. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we will be coming with every Tuesday night at eight p.m. Uh, and uh, we will play from 8 to 9.30. We'll have you off. It's we'll one night of revival. Every uh, okay. every uh, video keeps coming. Fix it. And uh, so we have revival every Tuesday night. It's going to be in a different country. So we're going to invite you to come away with us. Hallelujah. 
and um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, bless the Lord. We pray that many of you mm -hmm. have sent your comments and said uh, that it was amazing. This is what we plan to do. We plan to prepare a executive team to go with us. Uh, and uh, God is, is does a miracle signs and wonders. Demons are cast out which is warlocks give their heart to God. Uh, we never know what country, what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. But we have seen him. I've seen the paralyzed rise up and walk. I've seen uh, numerous of miracles. And so we invite you, we invite you, if you have a heart for ministry, to be trained, to be prepared so that you can be a part of the awesome, great move of God. It's 3 a.m. in Kuwait. It's 3 a.m. and they're on with Ooh, us. Jesus. And they're watching with us. Hi, you Kuwait. Be God bless you. We know we're coming blessed. to see you. Yes, we are. You we are blessed. coming to May visit. You be a light they are in dark on places. every service and it's 3 a.m. Hallelujah. And, and not only are on, they're on on time. They're not <laughs> the first ones. They're the first Jesus. couple of ones. And we thank you, Kuwait. We're doing a special prayer for you yes. on our Friday night date night with mm -hmm. God. And uh, we pray that, um, and I believe they have a group of people watching with them. As far as I can understand, we have a safe group of people. But we're going to call mm -hmm. you on, uh, Pastor and I are going to give you a call. And just to hear your voice and just to tell you that we love you. And we thank you for being a part of the Bishop Stanfield Ministries. Amen. Uh, let's go to, to Kenny and Angie and mm -hmm. let's take an offering. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> Morning, Cathedral family. We Real are the Williams. I'm Kenneth, and this is my lovely wife, Angela. What time is it, church? It's seed time. According to Malachi 3 and 8, will a man rob God? Yes, he will. How? In tithes and offerings. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 states, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves what? A cheerful giver. Yes. We're going to give you a moment to submit your tithes, seeds, and offering. You may do so at cash to Cash App, and the Cash App tag is dollar sign bishop stanfield s-t-a-n-f-i-l-l -L, all one word bishop stanfield we'd like to thank you in advance for your tithe seeds and offering and we'd like for you to enjoy the service and have a blessed week thank, thank you. you bless the lord thank you all for your liberal and free giving and cheerful giving remember that we are not on youtube we won't be on youtube for another two months. So we won't be on YouTube probably uh, at this rate we, until September. And we're going to see then if we're going to continue with YouTube. Right. So right now, Pastor's building another platform, but we're going to be on Facebook. You can see me see the, the services on Bishop Shirley Stanfield, mm -hmm. but I prefer you to go to Bishop Stanfield Ministries mm -hmm. and follow because my personal page is going to be coming down soon. The Lord mm -hmm. is leading me to Bring that page down and move. There's some 6,000 viewers that are part of that page to move them over to the Bishop Stanford Ministries. That's going to be happening between mm -hmm. now and September. I'm going to mm -hmm. shut that page. So if you're not a Bishop Stanford Ministries follower, mm -hmm. you're going to miss the service. So I need mm -hmm. you to go to Bishop Stanford Ministries, press follow. And then, of course, our website. Our website is going to be up and running. And, uh, of course, Thanks you'll be able to go to... Uh, Testimony TV, and you'll be able to yeah. see it there. So right. as we re as we reconstruct and as we prepare, I want you to be on with us. We will be preparing for the development center in in September. We're going to let everybody enjoy June, enjoy awesome July, enjoy your your summer uh, vacations and all of that, and then we're going to move and hit hard and go forth in the month of September. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm. I think that's it, Pastor. Any, any other announcements? Saturday, men's time. Men's time, Saturday. <laughs> men's time. Right. Someone our power, you know, just collaborate with, with the men and see what we see what how we're thinking and what's going on with them. And Amen. it's very simple, uh, nothing hard, nothing 
no pressure, but well, it's a point in time. Fellowship yeah. is always a good time, yeah. and we know that your time is precious. So five to six, you can be with Pastor. I may jump on for five minutes and just pray with the men, and just kind of give that. Uh, give an encouraging word. I believe that the spirit of encouragement is needed now more than ever. I'm telling you, based on the, the what the Lord gave me this morning for the Bible study. Uh, but I want all the men, you have sons, you have nephews, you have brothers, you have uh, fathers, whatever, get them to come on with pastor. We don't put it on Facebook because it's a very private time and it's a very intimate time. And they'd be down there laughing. I can hear them laughing all the way upstairs and it's a good time. So those of you that are married, those of you that have sons, nephews, fathers, brothers, please, Denise, give them the information. It's on zoom. It's not on Facebook. And then of course, next Saturday, Lady De- Dennis. Now, y'all know that's my mom. Mm-hmm. That's my mom. She will be with the ladies, and we're going to have an awesome, awesome time. But what you don't miss is one of Mr. Third Saturday in July. It's going to be a one year anniversary. Apostle Spaulding's, I see that you're on. I'm going to ask Bishop Parch to come on. All the ladies that have been on all year long to come on and just holler for about two minutes. And we're going to have an amazing time celebrating our one year anniversary. It is one year uh, for our date night with God. And we are uh, we are we are so excited. Denise put that information about date night with God. We come on at 12 and most times we pray till six. Uh, and I'm telling you, the power of God moves. We have seen, hallelujah, people with COVID real bad, get up out of the bed, hallelujah, wash themselves, eat, cook, clean, hallelujah, and command death to leave their room. I am so excited about the date night with God. Uh-huh. Okay, I think that's all uh-huh. of our announcements uh, for now. Well, and um, know, just- Yep. Go ahead, Pastor. (laughs) Thank all of you for tuning in to our television station uh, airing on last night. Um, It was phenomenal. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much. Thousands and thousands of people are now tuned into the the, the experience. Go ahead. You got the power. Uh-uh. You got the anointing. You got the power. Uh-uh. You got the anointing. All right. We want to thank you for your liberal giving. As we said, you can go to you can go to uh, Roku Boxfire TV and go to On Demand, and you can see uh, the experience there anytime. But we air live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. and uh, people from all over the world. Uh, I talked to my uh, network producer. Uh, earlier and she texted me. She said, it's phenomenally. We've been trying to do this for a while and this mm-hmm. just seemed like the perfect timing mm-hmm. and in and, and, and the will and the timing of God. So we give God praise for that. Let's keep uh, dear Pastor Cassandra in prayer. Let's keep her in prayer. Uh, and all those that are on our prayer list, uh, let's uh, call their name out. And let's uh, spend a few minutes in prayer every day, just praying for those that are sick, those that are going through. Hallelujah. Pastors, any other announcements? We're good. Hallelujah. So very glad to see everybody on. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We bless him. We give him praise. We give him glory. Oh, it's one more announcement. Mm -hmm. Um, you looking snatched. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. He's been cutting up I've all been day. outside cutting the grass. I got to go give you something to drink. I'm being hydrated. <laughs> you know, I, he I, been out there in that heat. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But I, I got to tell him, he takes I, care. I don't even have to care. Oh, and I'm Lord, not Lord, bragging. Jesus. Y'all know uh, I, I'm very humble when it comes to this marriage. Um, I've waited 15 years, but I don't have to carry a bag. I've never had to take out the trash, and I'm not bragging, but that's just that's what your husbands and fathers and brothers and F news are going to get on Saturday. Pastor's going to talking about taking care of your queen 
and uh, he's preaching on Sunday. Oh, yes, he is. He's preaching every second Sunday. He preaches and he preached, too. And uh, and uh, uh, he's going to be speaking on better way for the next couple of months. Uh, and that's going to tie into the theme on excelling. Uh, excelling means to do what you do and do it better. But doing it unto the glory of God. Hallelujah. Give me something. to mm -hmm. get yeah, drink. Yeah. OK, let's go ahead into Bible study. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. How we love you, how we praise you, how we glorify you, how we lift you up, how we honor you, how we thank you, how we bless your name. There is none like you. You are our father, our keeper, and our Lord. You are our protector. Bless everyone that is watching. Bless those that are on now and those that will come on later. Father, speak to each one of us individually and then speak to us corporately. Father, open up our ears and open up our minds and open up our hearts. We come before you humbly. We come before you with a simplistic heart. We come before you thanking you. We come before you asking you to give us wisdom where there's ignorance. Give us knowledge where there's a lack of. Give us, oh God, you said in your word that we can ask and you would give it, give it and give it unbraidedly. And we bless your name. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to pick up from Sunday. Hallelujah. I want to pick up from Sunday and um, uh, I want to tie Sunday morning, Sunday evening into the Bible study for, for this evening. We talked about... Uh, uh, Saul, and we talked about his inability to be obedient. I want to talk to you about the place of Gilgal. Gilgal is mentioned several times when it comes to Saul, that he was um, at Gilgal. Gilgal is the place where your analytical mind must be cast down and your spiritual mind that's why the, the just live by faith and not by sight. Your analytical mind gives you a sight of what you comprehend, what you see, what you think, and how you feel. Your analytical mind is based on what you have seen, what you have heard, and what you've been told. Oftentimes, people are led astray because of the bad information that has been deposited into them. Uh, such as how to treat your marriage, such as uh, your thoughts on abortion, your thoughts on uh, fornication, your thoughts on money, how you handle money. Uh, oftentimes, the people who have raised us, uh, our parents or those who had a hand in raising us, they leave an imprint on our lives. If they were people of God, then hopefully the imprint was good. If they were not people of God, then sometimes the imprint is so worldly and so not true. Uh, I always say when you are raised in a home of godly uh, people, people who love God, they, they deserve double honor. That's what the Bible says. They deserve double honor. Why? Because of, of their ways naturally and of their favor from the Lord. Now, when somebody has put an imprint in you, hallelujah, and an imprint on your life, once you get older, you have to decide based on how your life is going and based on how you comprehend the life, you have to decide if what they imprinted in you is what you want to live. Hallelujah. For instance, if the people who imprinted into your life as you were growing up were poverty and they had poverty ways, as you grow up and as you become uh, a part of society and you start learning, there's a better way to handle finances. There's a better way to, to spend my money. There's a better way to invest my money. It was never meant for you to be imprinted until the time you got to 18 or went to college or until the time you left home to stay there. It was each generation should get wiser and wiser. So your learning life, your spending time learning life should not end at college or after college or graduation. It should continue until the day you die. 
We have a responsibility to grow. We have a responsibility to learn. We have a responsibility to get more knowledge and that we have that responsibility to live it. We have responsibility to share it and to enhance the generations under us. So that imprint that was placed on your life, uh, some of us have wonderful God-fearing parents. I had a God-fearing grandmother, mother, so forth. But they had bad eating habits. They ate for everything. Somebody got saved, they ate. Somebody died, they ate. Somebody had a birthday, they ate. Somebody, whatever the case may be, good or bad, it was eat. Every Sunday, uh, there was fried chicken and collard greens and macaroni and cheese and sweet potato. Of course, we had sweet potato pie. We learned fellowship with eating. Now, back then, I was a little girl. There was no other place to grow up in. Like you see on uh, uh, on Sunday of the shows on Sunday when they sit around the table. Well, we had a whole church. We had a whole family. And we had dining room where we just sat and ate and laughed. It was the, the, it, it made the, it was the closure of a perfect day. But I got sugar diabetes, uh, obesity, and, and, and this was a learned habit. So some things you got, you must know that you must relearn. It wasn't that people were trying to be evil. It was that that's all they knew. In the slave community, when the families came out of slavery, there was a hatred. There was an evilness. There was a pervertedness that they learned from the slave masters. And some of uh, the identities that we left with, uh, and, and let me go ahead into the Bible study. Some of the identities we left with is what uh, was done to us through slavery. Come on, talk to me. And so if four years of slavery doesn't get erased in, in 100 years, it's going to take time to erase the erroneous information, the diabolical traditions, the, 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 the insanity thoughts. It's going to take time to get that out of the generation. This is why when the children of Israel left Egypt, God took them through a process to get Egypt out of them. They were complainers. They were whiners. They were naggers. They were never satisfied. While Moses was up in the mountains getting the Ten Commandments, faces, sitting in the presence of God, they were downstairs throwing their gold. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord that God took from uh, Egypt and get, made them give, they wasted their plunder in fire building idols. And that's what we as slavery do. We try to buy the biggest car, the biggest house. We try to wear, we try to prove uh, something and there's nothing to prove. And that's why society says that money doesn't stay in the black community one time. When a person gets paid, their money goes straight out into another community, whether it's the Jewish community, the Chinese community, the Asian community, the Hispanic community. People know that the corner store down the street it's going to charge you double for what you can get at Safeway. The Safeway is going to charge you more than what you can get at Costco. And instead of them thinking of how can I spend the little bit of money the best way I can. And that's why the development center is coming. Because we want to do better. But the wisdom and the knowledge to do better. Everybody knows when you get ready to buy something, you need to check three different ways before you spend that dollar. Hallelujah. There's too much con. There's too much game. There's too many people trying to benefit off your ignorance. And the, the, the enemy hates, a con artist hate. his worst enemy is an educated consumer. Well, the devil's worst enemy is the educated believer. The more you are educated, the more you are developed, the more you are prepared, the enemy hates it because he know he can't suck upon you. He know he can't manipulate you. He know he can't con you. One, you know your word. Two, you know your rights. Three, you know your access. So here is Saul. He is now, oil has been paid on him, Saul, King Saul, and he is given the opportunity to go to Gil, and he's in Gilgal to go to war. He is told to wait for Samuel. Samuel waits. He waits the seven days. Samuel doesn't come. Now he gets an attitude because Samuel ain't here when he said he would get here. Now Samuel is the prophet. He's the king. Samuel is the one that laid hands on him and pour all on him. Samuel is the one that has the voice of God. Every ministry ought to have tried, tested, and true prophets. <clears throat> 
I'm not talking about the prophets that just want to run around and collect money. I'm talking about prophets who spend time fasting and praying and they're seers of the Lord. I'm not talking about palm readers. I'm not talking about people say, give me your hand and let me see what you say. That's not, that's not prophets. Those are seers. Those are with that witchcraft. Hallelujah. But those who the Lord speaks to, hallelujah, whether you're a male or a female, that's a gift, that's an office, that's part of the, the five ascension gifts, that, that's ascension gift, that's one of them, the prophet and the prophetess. There is special testing and special trials that those who are anointed to be prophetess and prophets have to go through. That ain't something that somebody can slap all and say, now you're a prophet, or you can tag a title. You have to have proof that you walk in that office and just prophesying one time is not a proof. You have to walk in that office and you have to have the manifestation. What did the Bible says? If one says that they are a prophet, then see if the prophecy they prophesy comes to pass. If their prophecy doesn't come to pass, then you know they're not a prophet. They're just a, they're a prophet liar. Also prophets are trained to be humble. They're not running you down in the parking lot. There are people of order if they're trained correctly. There are people of order. They get their permission from whoever the angel of the church is, the pastor of the church. I believe I have a word. A pastor, somebody should validate who they are. Somebody should validate who they are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And so Saul is not waiting for prophet Samuel. Prophet Samuel is the prophet to the nation. He refuses to wait. Uh, his ego, uh, his impatience, his anxiety, his anxiousness. Okay. In Gilgal. Now look at the place, the physical place, but I want you to see that spiritual place. There's a place in Gilgal that you can get stuck. There's a place, it's a wilderness. If you don't learn to avoid or cast down your analytical thinking, your analytical thinking will make you outthink your obedience to God. Come on, let me say it again. Hallelujah. You ever talk to somebody and they, they so gray around the truth that you don't know what to do? You say, this is it. Oh, no, that's not what I did. I did this. Well, see, what happened was, was this. Or why I did that was this. And they refuse to be, deal with the truth. They have an explanation and a justification and an answer for everything. Hallelujah. They will stay in Gilgal until they learn to do what God said, the way he said it, when he said it, and how he said it. And so Saul dies in Gilgal. He dies some 13 years later in, in, in war, but he, his growth in the kingdom ended in Gilgal. The second time God told him to go kill the Amalekites, he decides to let the people keep the best of the sheep because he thought he knew better. An analytical mind, that's what the Bible says, uh, there seemeth the way. It seemeth right, but the end thereof is what? Destruction. Destruction. My thinking can be destructive if I outthink my obedience to God. Come on, say it again. Mm -hmm. My thinking can destroy me if I outthink Okay. The obedience of God, the obedience of God is trusting God, trusting his instructions and trusting his ways. Trusting God is not saying I'm trusting God. Trusting God is leaning on him when you don't even see him. Mm -hmm. Trusting God is doing what he said because he said it. Now, oftentimes you got to try the voice that you hear to make sure that voice be of God. That's a place you got to go into. That's a testing place you got to go. That's a place of fasting and a place of prayer that you learn the voice of God. You learn the voice. There's three voices. What did I teach you? There's the voice of God. There's your soulish voice. Okay. And then there's what? A demonic voice. Okay. How do you know when there's a soulish voice trying to become a demonic voice? You have sugar diabetes. Okay. And, and, and you check your sugar and your sugar is high and you decide that, uh, my sugar is high, but I'm gonna believe God and I, I, and God's going to take care of my sugar. But then you go and you get a slice of cake, carrot cake. and you carrot cake, any kind of cake you want to make it. And you know, your sugar is high. Now it'd be different if your sugar is regular or normal, but you know, your sugar is high. Okay. There is a demonic voice trying to work in your soulish voice 
to destroy you. The enemy knows, okay, your soulish voice. He's been there as you grew up as a child. Is he omnipresent? No. Is he everywhere? No. But he has assigned principalities. He already knows your soulish. Oh, I love that. Okay. So now you have to fight that your kingdom voice or the voice of God becomes louder than your soulish voice. That's the case of if you're perverted. Maybe you were molested. Maybe somebody fondled you. Maybe somebody molested you. Somebody raped you. Hallelujah. And we, we're sorry for that. We feel bad for that. But that spirit that was working on them is now trying to work on you. Hallelujah. And you may have things you're dealing with in your soulless realm that you don't know what to do with. Well, you've got to cause your spirit ear, three ears, your spirit ear to be the ear that you hear. You have got to have power in the voice of the voice of your spirit. Are y'all hearing me? So Saul is anointed king, but he doesn't deal with his soulish issues. He has low self-esteem. He never thought he would ever be a king. He was not prepared to be king. And I don't know if you can prepare somebody to be obedient. Obedience is either in you or it's not. He certainly was spoiled because uh, we know that he went to look for his father's donkey. And that's when he ran into Samuel. And that's where Samuel anointed him. So we know that he was spoiled. But now he's put in a position and God gave him favor and he does not respect or honor the favor. In the place of Gilgal, you got to learn the voice of God. You've got to learn the obedience of God. Mm. You've got to learn to yield. It is the place of of, of testing. Mm. It is the place of testing. Mm. Hallelujah. The quicker you pass that test, the quicker you can move on. Mm. Hallelujah. I know so many people say to me, I'm stuck. I, I, I love the Lord. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But there's small little ways. They are disobedient. In small little ways, ways. They are disobedient. They are limited to the uh, Holy Spirit working through them and in them because they're disobedient, <clears throat> whether it's arrogance, whether it's pride, whether it's justification. Here God said, look, kill, I'm going to use you. Go in and I'm give you the war. Okay. He was busy setting up monuments to, to salute himself. Okay. The Bible says be humble. Humble is knowing who you are. Let others speak of you. Let others a uh, 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 sound the alarm for you. Don't sound the alarm for yourself. Don't have a need for the pat on the back. And if you do, then fast it and get rid of it. Hallelujah. I was amazed because I never watched the preaching services. I never. Hallelujah. Once I preach a message, that's it. And uh, uh, the last couple of weeks, I've had the occasion because pastor pushed the issue. He said, we're going to show this revival. And then <laughs> television came and and I've I've never I've never heard those words those words until I preached it when I preached it hallelujah and when I preach it I sit and I hear the Holy Spirit hallelujah you have to watch what happens in your soulish realm because your soulish realm determines how long you are in Gilgal now after you pass the test for Gilgal after you pass that test and you have multiple tests Lord I want to be obedient. Lord, I want to be obedient. Maybe you at your job, and there's a problem with your job, and the Lord said, be quiet, say nothing. Because sometimes being quiet is harder than saying something. Yeah. Be quiet, hallelujah, because he wants power over your mouth. He says, give, give your tithes. Give. He wants power over your hand, hallelujah. He'll say, go here, go there. He wants power over your feet. And his voice and your submission, it's like your brain. If I say to my brain, oh, lift, I'm going to lift my hand up. My brain tells my arm, lift up your hand. That's why when you have brain damage, you can't move because your signal's got to come from your brain. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the signal got to come from God. When God says, do this, you, you do it. It's automatically, you're surrendered to him. When he says, don't do it, you don't do it. Why? Because you're surrendered. You, know, you see a person, I've seen them for many years, 30 years in that ministry, they say, oh, they're doing fine. They got a job. They got off drugs. They've been clean for 90 days. Uh, and, and, and I have to, and they go to work and say, oh, I, I get paid today. I said, no, I'm going to send so-and-so with you. I don't need nobody to go with me. I said, yes, you do. Yes, you do. 
I said, because who you was before you had money ain't the same you that you got money. Okay. See, submission is easy when you ain't got no money. <laughs> you can't go nowhere to the drug man with. Mm -hmm. But once you get money in your pocket, that's a whole new demon. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. A man can act clean when he's around his wife, but when he's not around his wife, that integrity is when you when nobody's there to check you. Mm -hmm. That's what integrity is. Who are you when nobody's there to check you? Mm -hmm. When nobody's there to see you? That's who you really are. That's who your integrity is. And so oftentimes, and how did I know that? Because people would go, they go to work, get their paycheck, and they be on their way home, and they catching the bus one way, they get off, and they before they know it, they done caught the bus another way. Mm -hmm. Whole paycheck gone. Don't see them for weeks. Mm -hmm. What happened to them? They had money in their pocket. They weren't ready to handle that money. Mm -hmm. They weren't ready to handle that responsibility. The demonic forces in them or on them was greater than their obedience to the voice of common sense, their soulish voice. And so you got to be able to admit, you know what, my soulish mind, I, I, I need some help. I need some counseling. I need some strength. I need to fast. I need to pray. I need to build. You very well can do it, but because there's no power behind you, you're struggling and you're losing. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you are a spender of money, you don't handle money. Learn to keep money out your hands until you get power over it. You're going to have to get power right. if you want to be trusted with it. Hallelujah. Let's go on. So the God of get, get the, the, the Gilgal, the place or the space of testing, the place of proving yourself in obedience. Hallelujah. What is Gilgal? The place of proving yourself in obedience. Every person needs to go through this before they get married. Every person needs to go through this before they, be, they come into ministry. Every person needs to be in this place, this place of obedience, this place of testing, this place is your pride, your arrogance, your impatience, your anxiety. Is that going to cause you to flip? Mm -hmm. Is that going to cause you to outthink the obedience of God? Hallelujah. And so, so, so Samuel told Saul, says, just stop talking. Just stop talking. Hallelujah. Stop talking. Because every time you open your mouth, you're lying. Every time you open your mouth, you're trying to justify your disobedience. So where's that place called? Gilgal. When you're in a place of being tested of your integrity, the place of being tested for who you are. Hallelujah. Learn that place. Pass it quickly. Deal with that place. <clears throat> if you got, if you find yourself lying, say I got going to fast. I'm, I'm picking up that line again. How do you find yourself sneaking and flirting? Going to fast. That means that, hallelujah, you're still struggling with it. We all have stuff that we're going to have to keep our finger on. How do you know that game? You go to the, the to the fair. You go to the to the little uh, to to. Uh, Six Flags or wherever you're, mm -hmm. Disney World, and you got that hammer, and the head come up, pop, and then you go you go down there, pop. That's what that that's what you're doing with the flesh, mm -hmm. popping it up. You hitting it, you hitting it down in the name of Jesus. I bind you up, Hallelujah. Curse the spirit. I bind you up. Mm -hmm. You maybe never curse except for when you get mad. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when you need to capture that demon. That's when you need to capture that foul spirit. It's mm -hmm. a foul spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's it's foul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And somewhere in your anger, in your soulishness, <clears throat> is this helping you? In your soulishness, hallelujah, your soul has said to you, oh, well, cursing is what I do when you get me mad. Don't get me mad and I won't because and, 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 I'm going to let you have it. Hallelujah. So now you need power when you get angry. Hallelujah. If you're not angry, you don't need the power because you're okay. It's that place when you got angry that you need that power. Lord Jesus, help me when I'm angry. Help me when I'm out of my out of myself. Help me when I'm, I'm not conscious. I want to be a Christian at all times. I want to be a faithful believer at all times. When I'm angry, when I'm upset, when somebody did me wrong, not just when things are well, I want to be a believer because I don't want to embarrass the kingdom. Hallelujah. So what you going to be doing? You got that spiritual hammer? You're going to be pat, 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 pat. You may be fine. You may not have jealousy, except when you're around somebody that's a competition or somebody that you feel like, oh, I wish I had what she had. Get that hammer in the name of Jesus. Pop it. Bam it down in the name of Jesus. Rebuke it. Cast it down. Cast down every stronghold. Know your soulish realm. 
Know what's in your soulless realm. Know what's coming up. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You realize that you're flirting. You realize that you're sending eye signals. You're making little flirts. Don't play with it. Don't try to deny it. Deal with it. Get that hammer and say in the name of Jesus. Don't bother with the person. The person's not the problem. You are. Deal with you. Turn that light on you. Turn that mirror on you. Hallelujah. Somebody congratulates you or somebody uh, 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 gives you a, a, a compliment. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm, that's right. Get that hammer and bang on that cry. Bang on that arrogance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bang on it. Hallelujah. Why? Because that pride is going to cost you more. Hallelujah. So Gilgal is my place of testing and my place of dealing with my analytical thinking and my soulish realm. What is Gilgal? Gilgal is dealing with my analytical thinking and my soulish realm. Now, what happens to believers and those that are called that don't deal with in Gilgal? They become a song. They are discredited in the kingdom or the office or the anointing that God wanted to use them with gets ripped from them. I've seen many people pastoring and God has left them. I've seen many people prophesying and God has left them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. They still have what they had, but they are not in good fellowship with the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when he said destroy everything, they kept some things. Mm -hmm. Their analytical mind was stronger and more of an influence than submitting and, and, and releasing themselves to the obedience of God. Now, mm -hmm. what's the next place? The Garden of Gethsemane. So you got Gilgal and you got Gethsemane. Gethsemane is the place of yielding. It's the place of yielding. You can't get to Gethsemane until you successfully go through Gilgal. Your obedience, hallelujah, your obedience in Gilgal qualifies you for Gethsemane. Where did Jesus go? He went to the wilderness. He went to Gilgal. Where was Gilgal? The place of testing. Where Satan tested him. Turn this throne into bread. Hallelujah. What did he quote? Scriptures. Because the only thing you can use against the enemy is the word. What can you use against the enemy? The word. He's 6,000 years old. He's smarter than you any day of the week. He's more cunning. He, the Bible calls him a genius. He's a genius at criminology. He's the worst criminal that the planet has ever seen. There's no, there's no psychological books. There's no DNM to, to identify Satan. Mm -hmm. Fact about it, nobody's ever seen him or can describe him. Warlocks and witches have seen the form of him, but, 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 but most of us see his imps. We don't see him, the man, Satan, Lucifer. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so Jesus defeats him at Gilgal. Now he's at Gethsemane. Gethsemane is the place you die. You can't die until you're obedient. You can't die to the flesh until you're obedient. Some people trying to hang on the cross and it's not working because they haven't been through Gilgal. They haven't gone through the soulless realm of their pride and arrogance. They haven't gone through the submitting or the testing of their soulless realm. So now they are trying to yield to some big stuff. They are trying to become a pastor. They're trying to become an evangelist. They're trying to become whatever. And they haven't gone through Gilgal. Gilgal is the place where the voice of God precedes any other voice. If you don't go to that place, you cannot successfully go to Gethsemane. Mm. You cannot, you will fail at Gethsemane because the soulish realm that should have died in Gilgal is so alive that <laughs> When you get tested and tried, hallelujah, you will quit. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What happened to Paul? Paul, mm -hmm. but Peter, Peter got angry. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He, he, his testing was at Gilgal. <laughs> hallelujah. His testing was at Gilgal. And we said, oh God, he said, I will obey you. I will fight for you. He said, before the rooster crow three times, you're going to deny me because you haven't gone to Gilgal. What happened to him when he was walking on the water? He fell. Why did he fail? 
because yeah. he had to go through Gilgal. Why? Gilgal is the place of obedience, not just the storm, not just bad situation, not just rough situation, not just uh, 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 with hurricanes and storms in your life. It's the place that you are obedient no matter what. Mm. It's a place of testing. And as you are tested, you are tested more. And that's why we have Wednesday night becoming the word, Sunday morning fellowship service, Sunday evening teaching. Because as my test come, my test can only get from me what's in me. If I have no word in me, when I'm tested, I'll flop and fail. But when the word is in me, come on, some of you should see yourself growing. You should see yourself standing. You should see yourself getting promoted. You should see yourself saying, I passed that test. Man, I remember the times I never passed that test. I remember the times, man, I would have went off. I'd have kirked out. I'd have handled it like this. I'd have did this. I'd have did that. You ought to see that the word that you're eating is giving you what you need that answers when you're tested. Or when you get to a test, you say, mm, let me see. I see the A or it's B. It's guessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, hey, should I do this or should I do this? Hallelujah. And then when you go back to you say, I knew that was the answer. I don't know why I put that up. I knew that was the answer. So when I'm listening to the word, I'm not listening to the word for something just to feel good. I'm absorbing. I'm eating. I'm eating the word so that as I'm tested in life, as I go forth in life, hallelujah, I'm still call. not failing in the places Hallelujah. I used to fail. Mm -hmm. I've got the answers. Hallelujah. The word is in my mind. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Bishop, I hear your voice. What you're hearing is the anointing. What you're hearing is the word. What you're hearing is the word scrubbing out the soulish realm, scrubbing out all of those things that have been no good advice. People giving you information. Hallelujah. That, oh, if he ain't got no job, girl, if he ain't got this, he ain't got no car like this, I wouldn't be bothered with him. And yeah. so you had thinkings and you had ideas that were not of God. Hallelujah. And instead of you looking for a godly man, instead of you praying for a godly man, you've got the soulish imprint of people have, who, you, who were in your life that you met or people that you got to know, or people who raised you, you have their soulish imprint. And now the Holy Ghost has to erase that tattoo. Hallelujah. Erase that tattoo yeah. off your soulish mind so that now you can be what? Behold, I am a what? New creature. All things have passed away. Hallelujah. A transformation in my mind. The Holy Spirit is giving me a new thinking. The Holy Spirit is giving me a new understanding. Once you get to the garden of Gethsemane, your yielding place, you may stay there for a minute because there's some places you may not, I got other plans. It's when your plans become the plan of God. Mm -hmm. It's when your plans become the plan of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I had to go to the garden of Gethsemane. Now there's a place called Damascus. <laughs> <clears throat> the Saul experience. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's before Gilgal. I'll mm -hmm. talk about that later. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Where you submit, where you're knocked off your horse. Mm -hmm. You had a plan. You had a thing you was doing. <clears throat> and you had a Damascus experience that brought you to Gilgal, that brought you to Gethsemane, that would take you to where? To the garden. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about for the last five minutes. So I am going to Gilgal. I'm going from Damascus experience. That's the bust that Yui. That's when you bust that Yui. When he knocks you off your horse. When that with that thing that you had thought you had going on, when it crumbles and you realize, oh, I've been going the wrong way all this time. And you bust that Yui. Now you go to Gilgal and you learn the voice of God and the obedience of God. And then you go to what? Gethsemane, you learn the yielding and the surrendering. These have different levels. So you may be back at Gilgal at a whole nother level. You may be back at Gethsemane at a whole nother level. And then you may be back at a whole nother level. 
But that process is what you got to fall in love with. That process is what you got to embrace. That process, hallelujah, is better than being in a maze. And every time you go around, boom, you hit a wall. I mean, you hit a wall, boom. That process is what you embrace because that's the process of a believer. If you look at Abraham's life, Moses' life, David's life, if you look at Paul, if you look at Peter, if you look at all the men, women in the Bible, that's the process process that they were going to. The foolish, fully surrendering to God. Hallelujah. So just when you think you have surrendered, there's a whole nother surrender, surrender. Just when you think you have yielded, there's a whole nother yielding to yield. Hallelujah. It ain't over until you what? Die. It's not over until you what? Die. Now let's go and look. So my garden of Gethsemane is my place of yielding. Not my will, but thy will, Lord. Not my plan, but your plan. Mm -hmm. I have come to the obedience that my soulish realm no longer did dictates how I handle what I handle, but my the voice of God, the Holy Spirit is instructing and guiding me. Now, when I get to the place of yielding, hallelujah, depending on what it is, that yielding may be a struggle. That's okay. That's where fasting and praying comes in at. That's where yielding and going before God. And what happens is your yielding becomes so surrendered to God that whatever it is that he's asking you to do, you've already done it in Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. When you get ready to do it, you're just following, following out the manifestation of it, mm -hmm. but you've already done it. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I going through this? Why am I at Wednesday night Bible study? Why am I at Sunday morning service? You're going to want to share this to about 100 people by the time we finish. Because my ultimate place is the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. It is the garden of Eden that I am striving for here on earth. Right. We are called to heaven. Whether we die or rapture, heaven. But John said, I see a new heaven and a new earth. But I'm telling believers that God has not saved you for you to be down, depressed, and struggling now. He has saved you that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So, and I learned the word when I erase the soulish tattoos off my mind, yeah. when my mind start thinking like the word of God, yeah. I now, my space, my at my environment, yeah. my atmosphere becomes the garden. Right. I go through the garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. I go through the garden of Gilgal. Mm -hmm. I go through the Damascus experience mm -hmm. that I may come to the garden. Mm -hmm. Woo, glory. Jesus. Is this helping you? Is this good? Yes, 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 Is yes, this yes, good? Yes, Come on. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you for your offerings. I see them coming through. Okay, I want to read this here. Hallelujah. And we got about a few more minutes and we're going to let you go. Hallelujah. Okay, Holy Spirit. The Garden of Eden is symbolic space of perfect harmony. The symbolic space of perfect harmony. So when we say, let's go back to Eden. We say the place of perfect comedy. In your marriage, you should be looking for the God. Mm -hmm. In your finances, you should be <clears throat> looking for the God. Excuse me. Oh, that's so good. Thank you, Pastor. You should be looking for the God. In your health, do you know my husband's in perfect health? He's in absolute good health. He don't take a pill for nothing. I'll, he go to his, um, he's in good health. Dr. said, oh, see you next year. Oh, see you next year. Oh, see you next year. He's the same size he was in college. We <laughs> went to the family thing. And then people said, hey, how you looking the same? They got huge bellies. It's their lifestyle. It's their harmony of their lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. So my finances, I still got money, invested money from, what's this? Since 1990. I got investments from 1990. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That money I invested in 1990 is still making money for me now. Why? Because I, you got to come in perfect harmony. How, are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Perfect harmony lining up with the word. Your marriage. Do you realize Willie Jolly, him and his wife have not had an argument in over 40 years. They tell it. They tell how they did it. Hallelujah. Do you know why they came in perfect harmony? Yeah. Hallelujah. 
perfect harmony financially, perfect harmony in your marriage, perfect harmony with your grandchildren, perfect harmony. What did the Bible say? When your ways please God, even your enemies will be at peace with you. They may not like you. They may be jealous of you, but they're not going to mess with you. Why? Because your ways please God. So why am I going through Wednesday night Bible study, Sunday service? Why am I going? You're not there because the pastor, oh, I got to go to church now. The pastor going to have a fit. Then don't go. You need to stop going because your going is wrong. The reason why you're going is wrong. The purpose that you're going is wrong. If I'm going to go to church, if I'm going to go to school, if I'm going to go to work, if I'm going to go to anything, I'm going because that's the place that's supposed to make my life better. It is supposed to enhance my life. It's supposed to enhance my thinking. It's supposed to enhance my understanding. Everything else can be going to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. The world can be upset. The news, people are picking up guns every day, every weekend. People are being killed because somebody can't handle hell on earth. Yeah. But the believer is supposed to be having heaven on earth. Right. That's why you pray and ask God for a husband and you wait. Because you can go get any Tom, Dick, and Harry if you want to and just roll the dice. Ooh, let me see what I get. Is he a wife beater? Ooh, let me see if he gonna be a homosexual. Let, ooh, let me see if he gonna be a, a, a argue. You can roll the dice. But because you trusted in God, you expect God's best. You expect the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You can buy a house anywhere. You can go anywhere. If you got the money, wherever you got the money for, you can go. But you're not looking for a house with a dollar. You're not looking for a house with money. I'm looking to be where God wants me planted. Because when I be where he wants me planted, I know that peace is going to be there. Hallelujah. Where he leads me, I shall follow. So order my stuff. Steps, Lord. Yeah. Show me where you want me to go. Hallelujah. I am submitted and surrendered because I don't know. There is a way that seemeth right, yeah. but the end thereof is destruction. Yeah. So therefore, I'm going to be going through Damascus. I'm going to go through Gilgal. I'm trusting you. That's why James said, count it all joy when you go to Gilgal. Count it all joy when you go to Gethsemane. Why? Because this is going to get you in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are done. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Amen. We are done. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That God imagined as the zenith of creation and paradise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God called it the zenith of creation. Space of perfect harmony. The place in which absolute happiness reigns. It is nothing less than what is spectacular to have been that God imagined as zenith on earth. So God imagined zenith on earth. Mm. Hallelujah. Jeez. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. So what am I going to go do when I come, when I come to learn the word? I'm coming not just to get a word to feel good, to feel goosebumps. I'm, 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 I'm imparting it. That's why it's so important where you sit and learn. It's so important where you go. Because if they're playing games, if they're talking about foolishness, if they're a motivational speaker just trying to motivate you, it's not going to help you get to the God. It's not going to fix that marriage. It's not going to fix anything. You're just going to be going around. You're just, just going to be here a good word. You don't need a good word. You need a needed word. You need a word from God. Hallelujah. So be careful. Be careful what people are feeding you. If it's not the word, if it's not applicable, people can be talking the Bible all day long and not be talking the Bible. They can be talking about the Bible, but not talking about very few people spend time in the process to know how to give a word on the word. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So when I understand that I'm going through Gilgal, when I understand I'm going through Gethsemane, I understand I'm going to that Garden of Eden. And when you look at where you came from and where you are, you ought to get excited about where you're going yeah. because you mean life gets better than this? Yes, it does. And I want to declare a decree. We as believers are living our best life. I was happy before I got married, but my happiness has increased. Why? Because of my life has increased. Hallelujah. And he wants to take you from what? Glory, glory to glory to glory to glory. To glory. Yeah. How do I get there? I go to Gilgal. 
I go through the Gethsemane. I go to the glory. Holly, where is the glory? It's in the garden. Hallelujah. You, you, if you can't, if you can't handle the crown, you can't get the glory. So the glory is going through the process. Why am I going through a process? So you can share with others about the process and how to get through the process. Hallelujah. So that when you come out on the other side, he says, go strengthen your brother. Grab their hand. Go strengthen your brother. Don't boast about it. Don't brag about it. Don't talk about it. Share somebody here. This is how you financially do this. This is how, this is what we did. This is the word. This is the scriptures we use. Hallelujah. Because it's of no private invitation, no private interpretation, but it's the word of God, the power of God. So what am I doing? I'm going to the garden. Where am I living? In the garden. Hallelujah. Where am I living? So I need to look and see what areas of my life have I surrendered in Gilgal? Mm -hmm. What areas have I died and yielded mm -hmm. that I may enter into paradise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray that you have been blessed by this Bible study yes. becoming the word. Hallelujah. You can mark that, put that on there. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Gilgal, Gethsemane, mm -hmm. and the God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we give you praise. We yes. thank you. Your word is perfect. Mm. You are perfect. You are our God and our Father, our Keeper and our Lord. Help us to hear you in every area of our life. Financially, physically, mentally, emotionally. Whether it be with family, friends, enemies, co-workers, ministry. Help us to hear your voice. Help us not to move until we obey you. As pastor said, touch us, nudge us, push us, tap us. Glory. That we would know to stop and to hear you. Not just what to do, <clears throat> but how to do it. When to do it. Mm. The way to do it. Yeah. We are fully committed to you. That we have an adversary that is a genius at manipulation. Jesus. He is a genius at diabolical persuasion. And the only way we can outsmart him is through your spirit and through your word. Mm. So we are yielded like never before. And we surrender our soulish realm, our flesh, our wants, our desires. Mm. And we deny the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. We actually rebuke it and we cast it down. Mm. Father, we want to be so yielded to you that our conscious and our subconscious are yielded. That when we're thinking wrong, when things are running through our mind that don't make sense, we'll hear the Holy Spirit say rebuke that and we will rebuke it. Whether it be something off a of television or something we heard or something off of Facebook that we picked up that we think is innocent, but it's so diabolical. Father, we give you praise to correct us tonight. We give you all the glory and all the honor to chasten us because we want to be in the glory of the God. We want people to look at us and say, what are you doing? And we can say, this is what God has done. That there is no bragging in and of ourselves, but the bragging is of you. Make our name great that your name may be known. Mm. Hallelujah. Not the size of our church, not the bigness of our ministry, but that the power of our God. God, I believe that your people are struggling for development. They are trying and every time they try, God, they look like they're bumping their head. I pray for the development center. I pray for the practical principles and ways by which we come to an understanding how to defeat the enemy physically, emotionally, mm. economically. Hallelujah. Jesus. So God, we give you praise. We will never look at service again the same. We will never sit and hear your word again the same. We will never eat at the table again the same. We will never go through a test again the same. God, we give you praise. We thank you. 
In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Just walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Get ready for a drama-free life. Amen. Get ready for it because it's coming. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday. Amen. God bless you. Good night. Good night.